Hatchet franchise should be uh, what the Terrifier franchise is right now. Right. Um, it, it should have got more love because it's over the top. It's gory. It's everything that Terrifier is doing right now, except it came out during a time where it went under the radar. I told you yeah. that if social media was as big back in 2006 as it is in 2023, um, Hatchet would have been that uh, Terrifier. So. Oh, 100%. Well, uh I got it number 10. Um, this is a franchise that has four in it, only four. And I put it at number 10 because it's my favorite, one of my favorite monsters of all time, and that is Pumpkinhead. Okay. Uh, I have uh, the Ratchet Pumpkinhead, the uh, Demon of Vengeance, the one that you summon when you have uh, done, when people have done wrong to you. Um, the first film with Lance Hickerson. Um, might possibly be one of my favorite monster movies of all time. I actually grew up watching the second one more because they had it at my video store more than they had it had the first film. So Blood Wings came along in the early 90s, right when that direct-to-VHS fad started. Yeah. And it, I just didn't realize because it was such a good movie to me. Uh, speaking of Kane Hodder, he plays in it. Uh, R.L. Maloff, I think that's how you say his Maloff. name, who played Leatherface in Chainsaw Three. He he's got a role in it. Um, and fucking uh, oh, Bubba Clinton, um, Bill Clinton's brother no, plays the oh, mayor shit. in it. That's right. Yeah, funny enough. Funny enough, and you know, not to mention. Uh, forgive me, I cannot remember his name right offhand. Uh, Andrew something other. Anyway, he was the main bad guy in Dirty Harry. He went on to play the stepdad in Hellraiser. And, of course, he was the barber in uh, Child's Play 3. Anyway, he's the lead role in this film. Presto, you did. Yeah, and he's a great role. And then... You have the the uh, third and fourth one, which was filmed at the same time by the Sci-Fi Channel, added a little bit more special effects to it. Yeah, they wasn't as good, but they're still memorable. One, they they took on the Hatfield and McCoy, McCoy. Uh, yeah. feud and incorporate that, which is fucking cool. It's it was like, great. I love. Yeah. It. Uh, also, in that movie, the uh, the old grandpa was the. Uh, was Murray from uh, Leprechaun 2, the one where he's like, I want you gold, you little green bastard. <laughs> and the Leprechaun fucking yeah. puts the pot of gold in his stomach. Yeah. Uh, anyway. He, like, like puke it out or like start coming No, out of his he, mouth? Uh, he's like, uh, you got one more wish, and it's like this pot of gold in his stomach. He's like, get it out. And Leprechaun just takes his fingernail, just slices him open. That's, and that's how right. he kills that's him. That's right. And then, of course, the next one uh, had to do with a funeral director who was doing all these fucked up things to the bodies. Like, instead of burying them, he was throwing them in the swamp and doing all that. The great Doug Bradley played in that one. And also in the third and fourth films, Lance Hickerson also came back as kind of like this ghost, ghost type of deal, yeah. warning fucking people. Try so, to tell you putzes. They're, uh, even though the, the last two movies are not great, great movies, they're enjoyable to the fact that, you know, it doesn't go, it doesn't take away from the Pumpkinhead character. Pumpkinhead was still Pumpkinhead in that movie or in those movies, especially when, you know, they had the church scene. Um, I can't remember which one it is, but it's the one with Doug Bradley. They... <clears throat> They're, they they like go in a church and they're like, the yeah. demon can't enter here. We're all good. And all he does is take like a picket fence in the, in, in like a, uh, it's, it's, it's like two crosses. It looks like two crosses, but it's just a broken picket fence. And he just ties it to a rope and throws it in the window and kills the fucking priest. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, well, if I can't come in, I can do this. Yeah. It's awesome. So, you know, I've always loved that. Uh, we was talking about the other night about how I wanted to get a pumpkin head tattoo, and you said that, yeah, you definitely want to add him to you as well. So yeah. that's how much this franchise or this character or this monster has to us. And we've talked extensively about how the pumpkin head series or the pumpkin head character is so goddamn scary, but nobody, 
it's like nobody wants to 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 uh, pick it up and do anything yeah, with it. I don't want to understand. There's so there's much. There's more potential. comic books. There's yeah. more comic books on Pumpkinhead than it is people saying, "Hey, let's turn this into some some movies." Yeah, like Blumhouse. What are you doing? It, it's right. Th- it's right there for the taking. You talk about and the thing about it is Pumpkinhead is legitimately scary looking. Right. Like it's. You have like so much potential. Like the 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 story just writes itself. Like you don't, as a fan of Pumpkinhead, if you just gave me a new movie called Pumpkinhead and you kind of change up the story a little bit, I'd be okay with that. Yeah. Like, give me Pumpkinhead. Do a new trilogy. Give me a Pumpkinhead trilogy. It's there for the taking. Don't CGI this motherfucker. Five Nights at Freddy. It. Give me the actual animatronics and. People in suits with rubber and everything. Yeah, not to mention the old school special effects guy was Sam Winston on the original Pumpkinhead. Right. So Sam Winston is a fucking Academy Award winning great special effects makeup dude. Yeah, do so this, do th- this justice. There's yeah. money to be made, guaranteed. The reason why I'm excited and talking about this because this is number nine on my list. Oh, sweet. Because, like you said, this movie is very important to us and i do love all four movies i think they're solid i think they're consistently good even though they went to sci-fi i still think they did pretty good the cgi it wasn't the worst thing but they used it in dark parts of the movie so and it, quick and quick it was a very quick thing it's not like you got like sharknado like you know you can see yeah. how fake it is and they've and they've always done a good job, and I appreciate them bringing back Lance Hickerson. That that shows me that the people that did those movies actually care about the movies and the franchise and respect and the lore and the fans because we all love uh, Lance Hickerson personally. One of the nicest guys I've met. Uh, very down to earth, very well spoken, just a great human being, and that's why I had to put. Pumpkinhead at number nine. Well, I'll go ahead right into my number nine. Uh, this is a franchise that has seven movies, um, five and uh, two off that I still count, and that is the Predator series. Predator. Yes. Uh, we I don't have this on my list, so you can sweet talk about uh, you ugly motherfucker. Of course, the uh, first Predator film uh, with the great Arnold Schwarzenegger and um, Jesse Ventura. And, um, you know, th- this movie started off. Um, I don't know what this movie intended to be. I don't know if it w- intended to be a action sci-fi movie or a sci-fi action film. I'm not sure. I think uh, it was probably playing off of the pat, uh, playing off of the 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 uh the fact that Arnold Schwarzenegger um was a huge action star but he pretty much got his start as a sci-fi horror villain in the terminator. Yeah. So it was a natural fit. Yeah. Oh, and easily. then um one of my hot takes is Predator 2 is my favorite in the entire franchise. I like Predator 2 better than Predator. Danny Glover is fucking awesome in anything he's in. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why it is. Um, I connect more to Danny Glover's character because, I'm, of course, I'm not six foot four, 270 pounds of solid fucking muscle, and neither was Danny Glover. He was a regular dude. Um, trying to deal with some fucked up shit. And I, you know, I, uh, and he gave the predator, in my opinion, more of a fight than any of the big muscled up fucks in the right. first predator. It's, so, yeah, you, you um, gotta love, uh, parts you know, here. and Dan, um, Gary Busey and, you know, Bill Paxton, RIP to him. And then, you know, the um, for a long time, we didn't have a Predator film after that until we got AVP and AVPR. AVPR is unwatchable. It's too dark. Fuck the people who said, we can see the rubber suit. If you would have lightened it up, it would have been a fine movie. Nobody would have cared. And uh, even though some of the later Predator movies get dumped on, um, I have I've seen them. They definitely have not kind of lived up to the first or the second one, but they haven't been like, oh, I don't want to watch that again type of movies. They have, they've always been like, well, that was decent. I'm not going to, you know, 
say it was the greatest of all time, but th- they've been decent watches, in my opinion. Um, so that's why I put Predator on there, but mostly for the first two films, even though we're talking about franchises, um, the way I would describe it is the first two are amazing, AVPR, kind of like that Freddy versus Jason. You could have done a little yeah. bit more with it, but it's fine for what it is. Um, AVPR, the only one that I'm just like, God damn. And then the rest of them are okay to me. So I thought Prey was fucking amazing. Yeah. Um, it was I, a good, I was uh, going to get to, to basic. Yeah. I was going to get to Prey. how, you know, we had predator and the predator, then you got predators, you know, it's always an S or the added to it. And we finally <laughs> yeah. got something just called Prey, which took it back to, you know, kind of like a, 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 a prequel type of deal when the when the predator first came here, the first humans, who would he have hunted? It's obvious it would have been the Native Americans, right? So, you know, that was a fine movie. I thought that it was cool that, you know, it's not just one predator. You know what I mean? It's like, well, didn't Arnold Schwarzenegger kill the predator? Well, yeah, he did, but it's more than one predator. Yeah, it's a species. Yeah, it's a species. So the fact that they um, had a different-looking predator in Prey, I thought was cool. If you notice, he he was he still resembled a predator, but he wasn't as big and muscly as some of the earlier ones. Yeah, they, they wasn't as advanced. Right, as he didn't have the later. steel... Uh, face guard on. He had like um, it was from a, a another animal he killed was kind of like his shield. You know, he well, had I actually animal heard, bones. Um, somebody say that the reason why was that is because he hadn't earned all of his armor yet. Right, right. He, Which he I thought was, was like, oh, that's even better. Like, well, he was sent to Earth to prove himself. That's that's what the deal was. Yeah. And I think that if you look at every single Predator movie, that's been the premises, even though you haven't recognized it. Yeah. Every single Predator has been sent to prove himself. They've they've either been sent to prove themselves or they have been on a mission to do something. Right. They haven't just showed up and be like, oh, well, blah, 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 blah. No, they haven't done any of that. They, they, they either have a mission or they're trying to prove themselves. And that's what I really like about the series. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's a great franchise. Um, it's it, as you said, like with Hatchet, it's in my honorable mentions. Uh, it was very hard not to put that on my list because of how many good movies there are. I mean, honestly, if you if you nitpick it and you take the AVP out of it and you just go off of all the movies with the Predator titles. I think it's a pretty solid series. I know a lot of people hate. Um, I think the hate goes to Predators. It's the one with the kid, right? Yeah, it's the one with yeah. the kid and everything. And I, I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. I actually enjoyed that one more so than the Adrian Brody one. Yeah, a hundred percent. Because I felt like the even though the Adrian Brody one was pretty damn good. I felt like it was trying to copy too much of the original. Yeah, it was definitely given that, you know, copy and paste vibes. But, but it, it was, was still, still good. good. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was still good. It was still good. Number eight. Number eight. Who's number eight on your list? I'm going to have to go with the one, the only, Hannibal. Sweet. I did not have Hannibal on my list. I'll tell you that right now. I'm liking this. This is great. Uh, I had to do some soul searching and digging deep uh, with putting Hannibal on here. I, at first, I, I don't know. It's not really a, something you consider a franchise off the top of your head. It's one you have to think about. Right. Uh, your average person would probably be like, oh, there's only one Hannibal movie. Well, yeah, kind of. But, I guess it kind of goes the George A. Romero route, you know, It, but it's more tied in. Like I'm saying, like his separate titles that... That's what throws people off is throws the fact people off, yeah. that it's separate titles, but there's li- literally 
two Hannibal movies with the title Hannibal in it. Yeah, Hannibal, Hannibal Rising, Red Dragon. 